I'm going to present uh, uh, today on behalf of my advisor, Narayana Aluru uh, at UIUC. So <coughs> I'm mainly going to talk about uh, desalination, water desalination through a, a 2D material uh, called molybdenum disulfide or MOS2 uh, nanoporous membrane. Uh, but <coughs> over the last year, we actually have worked on three different projects on blue waters. So the first one is uh, the one that I'm going to talk about today, water desalination using uh, molybdenum disulfide. And here we mainly uh, showed that uh, we can reject salt ions you know, through these uh, most two membranes, porous membranes, while we have very high uh, water permeation rates. And that's very important because given a, a pressure that we apply, in, uh, in uh, water desalination, uh, we can uh, purify more water if the, uh, if the uh, permeation rate is higher. And that, that work is already published uh, you know, last October. And in another project, we worked on uh, uh, DNA sequencing using a hybrid uh, graphene DNA origami nanopore. So there we were able to show that we can distinguish between the four different bases of DNA. And uh, uh, one of the challenges in, uh, uh, big challenges in DNA sequencing is actually the highest speed of uh, DNA translocation through nanopores. And that's because it's really hard to capture, you know, in experiments, uh, experimental measurements, to capture the signal uh, when the DNA is going uh, very quickly, rapidly through the pore. So here we also showed that this, this, uh, this nanopore membrane can actually retard the highest speed of DNA. And in another work, uh, <coughs> uh, my colleague actually worked on the developing a force field uh, to be used in computational models, uh, molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, and the force field is uh, basically describing the interaction between a 2D material called uh, hexagonal boron nitride uh, and water for uh, nanofluidics application. Okay, so um, one of the things that we really benefited from blue waters, using blue waters, especially in quantum calculations, the, the last work uh, that I just mentioned, was that we, uh, we have a large amount of memory on each node of blue waters. And that's really important when you are dealing with uh, large, uh, large size of quantum calculations where we have too many electrons and you need uh, lots of memory for that. So that's uh, uh, very beneficial to us. And here we also have the scaling of our codes, uh, both quantum and uh, you know, molecular dynamic simulations. So as you can see, they, pretty, uh, uh, they, they scale pretty well with number of cores uh, on blue waters. So that's uh, very good news. And also uh, we burned almost uh, 700 uh, K node hours on blue waters for these three projects. So let me just go and, and talk about uh, water desalination. So as I mentioned, one of, one of the challenges that uh, we have in uh, reverse osmosis, one of the methods in desalination technology is the permeation, the low permeation rate of water through these uh, porous membranes because uh, you don't get to uh, purify that much water. So one solution to that uh, is to actually use very thin membranes. That's because flux or water transport rate uh, scales inversely with the thickness of the membrane. So that one, one good example, I mean, solution candidate would be graphene because it's just one atom thick and, uh, and uh, we should expect, you know, very high uh, transport rate of water. And people actually have worked on graphene extensively and they showed that you know, we can get very high permeation rates. And uh, actually, um, two, three years ago in MIT, they, they also showed that if you add hydrophilic uh, groups to the edge of the nanopore, 
like hydro, uh, hydroxyl uh, groups to the edge of the nanopore, you can get even more, uh, you know, uh, even higher permeation rate. So now in this, in this work, we wanted to actually choose a material that inherently ha had this uh, hydrophilic nature within its, uh, its pore. And that is uh, molybdenum disulfide, or MOS2, which has <coughs> two atoms, molybdenum in, uh, in blue, uh, which is uh, sandwiched between two layers of sulfur, and it's three-layer atom, so it's uh, still thin, and we should expect high flow rate. And molybdenum is uh, highly hydrophilic, so imagine if you drill a pore here, then you're in the middle you have this uh, uh, hydrophilic nature already in place. So you don't need to functionalize uh, your pore in case of graphene, which is a very, very expensive and complex process. Okay, <coughs> so for our simulations, uh, we did uh, molecular dynamic simulations. So here we have the uh, most two nanopore. That's the nanopore here, that's the membrane. We have a rigid piston to push on salt water or seawater. These uh, spheres are actually ions. And then on the other side, we get fresh water. And we considered three different types of nanopores. The first two are really ideal. And uh, the, f the first one is the M-only pore, where at the constriction region of the pore, we only have molybdenum atoms. And the other one is the S-only pore, where uh, we have uh, only sulfur atoms at the edge. But, uh, you know, we also considered the mixed case, which is more realistic. And uh, so let me just uh, talk about the results. So the first thing that we looked at was the percentage of ion rejection uh, for different uh, pore types, mix, M only, S only, and graphene for different pore areas. So here I have, you know, pore areas ranging from 20 angstrom squared to 50, 60 angstrom squared. So as you can see, for very tiny pores of order of 20 angstrom squared, the rejection percentage is almost perfect. That's 100 percent, and that's obvious. And as you increase that that size, that uh, nanopore size, I mean the ions start to go through and your rejection will go down. But, um, I mean, you, you might say that, okay, let's just go with very tiny pores. But if you look at this plot, uh, where we have the filtered water molecules as a function of time, you can see that going from large nanopores of 50, say, uh, angstrom squared to those uh, small uh, pores, there's a very sh uh, significant drop uh, in, uh, in water permeation rate. And that's because for very tiny pore, the hydrogen bonding uh, is very weak between water molecules, and that reduces the permeation rate. So we cannot just, uh, you know, go with very tiny pores, and, uh, and also we, we, uh, we cannot have very large nanopores because we will lose the uh, rejection efficiency. Here I have <coughs> the water flux, uh, number of water molecule per nanosecond, as a function of the external pressure we applied for these different uh, pore types of uh, molybdenum disulfide and graphene. And here, for sake of uh, comparison, the pore areas of all these uh, nanopores are, you know, uh, quite similar because we are, we, are, uh, we are looking at flux and that should be normalized by the area. So here, for MO only pore, the red, the red curve, you see that we have the highest permeation rate, uh, followed by mix, S only, and graphene. But now the question is, uh, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's basically good news because we are beating graphene, but we wanted to know why we have, uh, you know, higher permeation rate for M only pore. So we know that flux is a function of density and velocity inside the pore, density and velocity of water inside the pore. So we plotted the water density as a function of the radial uh, distance from the center of the pore and also the velocity of water molecule as a function of the radial distance. <coughs> and as you can see, 
for both density and velocity, the, uh, the M only nanopore has the, uh, actually has the highest water density and velocity. So it's actually winning on both fronts. For density, it's obvious because MO is uh, highly hydrophilic, so it attracts more water, so that's obvious. But it was not uh, clear to us, to us uh, at, at the time why MO only has you know, higher velocity. But to answer that, we, uh, we thought that uh, might be because of the geometry, the unique geometry of the pore. So if you look at the M only pore, it's kind of co conical. It's, uh, it has a uh, hour uh, glass shape. Whereas for the S only pore, it's almost flat. So what we did here, we plotted the velocity profiles uh, at the site of uh, uh, molybdenum atoms and sulfur atoms. And this is what we got for M only and S only. For example, for M only, we have higher velocity at the site of MO, but that's the opposite for the other case. So to, to, ex to exclude the effect of chemistry, we fictitiously uh, replace uh, sulfur atoms with molybdenum atoms. So we have these uh, fictitious all molybdenum membranes, but we preserve the geometry of M only and S only pore. And as you can see, the velocity profiles are almost identical with what we got you know, in, the, in the previous slide. So that actually uh, led us to the conclusion that it's because of the conical geometry of the M only pore that we get higher uh, you know, water transport. And, and people, uh, people uh, in the past have shown the same physics for uh, you know, biological nanopores such as uh, aquaporin and also solid state nanopores like um, uh, silicon uh, nitride. So now that uh, you know, we understood uh, how, uh, why uh, M only pores have the highest uh, you know, permeation rate among all the nanopores here, we just want to look at this uh, whole picture of all the nanomembrane, nanomembrane uh, technologies in desalination. So here we have the two important factors in desalination. I have the percentage of ion rejection as a function of uh, water permeation rate. This is a log scale. And these guys are, I mean, these four dots and that are the existing membranes currently in, in the technology in the desalination to, uh, field. And here in orange is MOS2, and that one is graphene. And, and as you can see, uh, using graphene, we can have uh, several orders of magnitude higher water permeation rate. So that's uh, log scale. So uh, I mean, uh, the difference, uh, you, can, you might not see uh, the, 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 the difference uh, you know, quite well. And even for graphene, there's a 70% improvement when we use uh, most two compared to, um, to graphene. So here we showed that uh, you know, these uh, 2D uh, membrane, uh, most two is uh, very promising to be used for uh, water desalination. And we also showed that you know, the conical, the geometry of uh, the M only pore and, and also the chemistry, the, the hydrophilic nature of the pore uh, basically leads to higher water permeation rate and that is, uh, uh, that is important in uh, water desalination as I mentioned. The efficiency goes high because for a given pressure that you apply, you, you get more purified water. And uh, also we, we showed that theoretically we can have two to five or, uh, orders of magnitude higher uh, permeation rates using most two compared to other uh, existing membranes. So now I just want to uh, thank Blue Waters, um, you know, uh, this uh, powerful machine uh, that enables us to actually explore these uh, interesting problems, you know, over the past year.